Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at making um, a particular type of background um, or a wallpaper image and uh, we're going to be looking at the, uh, the rendering of a flame background uh, which is pretty simple to do uh, but I just want to show a few extra tricks that you might not be aware of. So basically the, the effect that we're looking at uh, can be found in the filters menu. So the first thing we're going to need to do um, I like to use a, a black background for this kind of effect, so we're just going to start off with a, a black background with our image. And the next thing we'll need to do is open up a, a new transparent layer. So we can just go over to our layers dialog and click uh, this icon here, which will give us uh, this dialog box, and we'll just have a transparent layer. So we just click OK, and then we click on our new layer up here, and uh, we're ready to work on it. So the next thing we need to do once we've uh, set up our image to work is to click on the filters menu. So we just go to filters and we make our way down to render and then nature and flame. Now when we open up flame, um, the settings I've got it on at the moment don't show anything at all really that are interesting. Um, but the first thing we're going to need to play with is the colour map. So. Um, we can choose any one of these preset colours, so we'll just go with uh, Sunny Harvest to begin with. And you can see that up in the preview box here, and um, we've got what this will look like to begin with. So if I just leave everything else as it is and press OK, and we'll see what this looks like to begin with. So you see it kind of automatically renders um, this kind of image. Um, but it's not particularly interesting, so I'll delete that and we'll, uh, we'll go through a process again and see how we can play with it. So we just go to Filters, and Render, Nature, and Flame. And this time what we'll do is we'll choose a different colour map. So uh, instead of uh, the Sunny Harvest, um, which we've used before, uh, we'll go to Rose. And you can see in the box next to it, we get a slightly different colour profile. So we can see that Rose um, has some reds and some blues and a couple of greens in there. So if I just press OK there, you'll see that gives us um, exactly the same pattern because we haven't toggled anything else but it gives us some different colours um, with the same thing so I'll just delete that again and let's see what happens when we make some more changes so we go back to render and nature and flame and this time we're going to keep the rose colour map um, but we're actually going to change this shape up here and the way we do that is by going uh, to this button up here, the edit and when we edit it we get nine options and an interesting thing happens when we click on one of these nine options it will create another nine um, examples of this same um, render um, but with slight variations and whenever you choose one the, the, the nature of those renders kind of evolves yeah. It's kind of a, almost like a process of natural selection. You know, the the common themes and the things that you select uh, tend to come to the fore. So this was our original one. If I choose something vastly different, like this one, you can see all of them change uh, when I click that to something that's a little bit more similar. So this is the one that we picked, and this is the one that's closest to the old one. But all of the other ones are beginning to have this kind of rounder image to them. So if I pick this one, which is even more bunched up, um, you can see the effect that has on all of them. So if I was to just press OK and then OK again, you can see it renders a very different um, type of image for us, uh, kind of like a, a nebula in space. So I'll delete that and we'll, uh, we'll have another go at seeing what else we can make. So we go to Filters and Render, and Nature and Flame. And another thing we can do, um, I'll just change the colour map because I'm getting bored of that one. So you can see this one's going to be a lot bluer. And we'll go back into edit. Um, as we click these, we can, you know, as before, choose ones that change as we pick our preferences. But they're all very similar still. But we can actually change um, their variation patterns as well. They can always be the same, which is what we've got it set to at the moment, or we've got this whole host of options as well. So you can have completely random, you can have linear, you can have sinusoid, I'm not going to try and pretend I can pronounce that, uh, spherical, swirl, 
So uh, we'll try swirl, uh, swirl to begin with. So you can see the effect that that has. So you know I can maybe pick a swirl one and see how they change. Um, we've got uh, say the heart, um, you know, which again just changes the way that we do that. Uh, we can try and some uh, very different ones like power, you know, and that will give us a different spread of uh, those again. Uh, and basically you can just play around with those as much as you need until you find something that you like. Uh, you can change things like the speed as well which kind of changes the, uh, the the scatter pattern or if you want something truly random you can click on randomize and you'll just get you know nine weird options and then you can work from there. You know, so find the ones that are best for you. So we'll um, just have a quick look at a random one. We'll try bubble and we'll go down, drop the speed and then hit maybe this one and we'll have that. And again it just gives us um, a very strange kind of pattern. Uh, the final thing, or the final two things that we'll look at, um, when we choose um, the the flame, we can actually move it around a little bit as well. So here we've got the image that we just created, um, and that's placed in this portion of the screen. But you can see we've got a tab here that we haven't explored yet, the camera tab. So if we click on the camera tab, and um, there's a few, or there's three different options that we can toggle as well. Firstly, we've got zoom. So as I toggle that, you can see that this moves sort of closer and further away from the camera. Uh, then we've also got the X and the Y axis. So as we toggle these, we can move it up or down or left or right as well. So by toggling the X axis, we can move the pattern on, along the X axis, essentially. And the same with the Y axis. You know, The higher the Y axis, the higher it goes on the screen. The lower the Y axis, the lower it goes on the screen. So we can actually perfectly center them as well. If you know, we're so inclined, make them very small or make them huge. You know, so we get a lot of control over how this final product will appear on the screen. Uh, this one's taking quite a while to draw. Um, so we can do that. Um, we can also overlay as many of these as we want. So we could have a, a blue one in the background, um, but then we can add another layer. Um, so we go over here, just simply add another layer. And we're still waiting for this one to draw, so I'm trying to explain this. Um, actually, I'll just shut up for a minute and then skip forward. Okay, so you can see it's um, fully drawn now. Um, you remember I, I created a new layer. Um, and the reason I created a new layer is because when working on this new layer, um, I can make a new flame. Um, and then if I change the colors of it, so I'll go back down, I'll go back to rose again, so we've got a red one and uh, we open it, oh no I'm sorry not open it, we edit it and okay we'll choose this one that's crazy, actually we'll choose this one and then we'll go to OK OK so here you can see we've got both layers um, you know our original one and then we added this one over the top of it so you can see how this can be used to make you know kind of randomized um, colorful neon looking uh, kind of backgrounds and wallpapers 